RWAC also began showing evidence of elevated friction. Relubrication was also performed on this RWA, and methods were found to temporarily increase its operating temperature to better improve the transfer of oil from its reservoir. The reaction wheel's speed range was decreased to limit lifetime accumulated rotations. These changes resulted in RWAC's performance stabilizing. During the spacecraft's deep space hibernation flight phase, engineers performed ground testing on a flight spare RWA at the European Space Operations Center. After Rosetta exited hibernation in January 2014, lessons learned from the ground testing were applied to all four RWAs, such as increasing their operating temperatures and limiting their wheel speeds to below 1,000 revolutions per minute. The RWAs showed nearly identical performance data. Three RWAs were kept operational, while one of the malfunctioning RWAs was held in reserve. New onboard software was developed to allow Rosetta to operate with only two active RWAs if necessary. These changes allowed the four RWAs to operate throughout Rosetta's mission at 67P, Triumuv Gerasimenko despite occasional anomalies in their friction plots and a heavy workload imposed by numerous orbital changes. In August 2014, Rosetta rendezvoused with the comet 67P, Churyumov Gerasimenko and commenced a series of maneuvers that took it on two successive triangular paths, averaging 150 km from the nucleus, whose segments are hyperbolic escape trajectories alternating with thruster burns. After closing to within about 30 km from the comet on 10 September, the spacecraft entered actual orbit about it. The surface layout of 67P was unknown before Rosetta's arrival. The orbiter mapped the comet in anticipation of detaching its lander. By 25 August 2014, five potential landing sites had been determined. On 15 September 2014, ESA announced Site J, named Agilkia in honor of Agilkia Island by an ESA public contest and located on the head of the comet as the lander's destination. Finally detached from Rosetta on 12 November 2014 at 835 Coordinated Universal Time, and approached 67P at a relative speed of about 1 meter per second. It initially landed on 67P at 15.33 Coordinated Universal Time, but bounced twice, coming to rest at 17.33 Coordinated Universal Time. Confirmation of contact with 67P reached Earth at 16.03 Coordinated Universal Time. On contact with the surface, two harpoons were to be fired into the comet to prevent the lander from bouncing off, as the comet's escape velocity is only around 1 meter per second. Analysis of telemetry indicated that the surface at the initial touchdown site is relatively soft, covered with a layer of granular material about 0.82 feet deep, and that the harpoons had not fired upon landing. After landing on the comet, Filey had been scheduled to commence its science mission, which included, characterization of the nucleus determination of the chemical compounds present, including amino acid enantiomers study of comet activities and developments over time after bouncing, Filey settled in the shadow of a cliff, canted at an angle of around 30 degrees. This made it unable to adequately collect solar power, and it lost contact with Rosetta when its batteries ran out after three days, well before much of the planned science objectives could be attempted. Contact was briefly and intermittently re-established several months later at various times between 13 June and 9 July, before contact was lost once again. There was no communication afterwards, and the transmitter to communicate with Filey was switched off in July 2016 to reduce power consumption of the probe. The precise location of the lander was discovered in September 2016 when Rosetta came closer to the comet and took high-resolution pictures of its surface. Knowing its exact location provides information needed to put Filey's two days of science into proper context. One of the first discoveries was that the magnetic field of 67P oscillated at 40 to 50 millihertz. Results from Filey's landing show that the comet's nucleus has no magnetic field, and that the field originally detected by Rosetta is likely caused by the solar wind. The isotopic signature of water vapor from Comet 67P, as determined by the Rosetta spacecraft, is substantially different from that found on Earth. That is, the ratio of deuterium to hydrogen in the water from the comet was determined to be three times that found for terrestrial water. This makes it very unlikely that water found on Earth came from comets such as Comet 67P, according to the scientists. On the 22nd of January 2015, NASA reported that, between June and August 2014, the rate at which water vapor was released by the comet increased up to tenfold. On the 2nd of June 2015, NASA reported that the ALICE spectrograph on Rosetta determined that electrons within one kilometer above the comet nucleus, produced from photoionization of water molecules, and not direct photons from the Sun as thought earlier, 
are responsible for the degradation of water and carbon dioxide molecules released from the comet nucleus into its coma. As the orbit of comet 67P took it farther from the sun, the amount of sunlight reaching Rosetta's solar panels decreased. While it would have been possible to put Rosetta into a second hibernation phase during the comet's aphelion, there was no assurance that enough power would be available to run the spacecraft's heaters to keep it from freezing. To guarantee a maximum science return, mission managers made the decision to instead guide Rosetta down to the comet's surface and end the mission on impact, gathering photographs and instrument readings along the way. On the 23rd of June 2015, at the same time as a mission extension was confirmed, ESA announced that end of mission would occur at the end of September 2016 after two years of operations at the comet. All stations in the briefing room, we've just had loss of signal at the expected time. This is another outstanding performance by Flight Dynamics. So we'll be listening for the signal from Rosetta for another 24 hours, but we don't expect any. Sylvain Lodiot, Rosetta Spacecraft Operations Manager, European Space Operations Center Rosetta began a 19 km descent with a 208-second thruster burn executed on 29 September 2016 at approximately 2050 Coordinated Universal Time. Its trajectory targeted a site in the Ma'ar region near an area of dust and gas producing active pits. Impact on the comet's surface occurred 14.5 hours after its descent maneuver. The final data packet from Rosetta was transmitted at 10 hours 39 minutes and 28 seconds. 895 UTC by the OSIRIS instrument and was received at the European Space Operations Center in Darmstadt, Germany, at 11 hours 19 minutes and 36 seconds. 541 UTC. The spacecraft's estimated speed at the time of impact was 3.2 km per hour, and its touchdown location, named Say by the operations team after the Rosetta Stone's original temple home, is believed to be only 40 meters off target. The instrument was produced in Italy, and improved versions were used for Dawn and Venus Express. The 30 cm radio antenna along with the rest of the 18.5 kg instrument was built by NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory with international contributions by the Max Planck Institute for Solar System Research, among others. Concert. The concert experiment provided information about the deep interior of the comet using radar. The radar performed tomography of the nucleus by measuring electromagnetic wave propagation between the Philae lander and the Rosetta orbiter through the comet nucleus. This allowed it to determine the comet's internal structure and deduce information on its composition. Development was led by the Laboratoire de Planétologie de Grenoble with contributions by the Ruhr Universitat Bach and the Max Planck Institute for Solar System Research. RSI. RSI made use of the probe's communication system for physical investigation of the nucleus and the inner coma of the comet. Gas and particles Rosina. The instrument consisted of a double-focus magnetic mass spectrometer and a reflectron-type time of flight mass spectrometer. The RTOF was highly sensitive for neutral molecules and for ions. The Max Planck Institute for Solar System Research has contributed to the development and construction of the instrument. Midas. The high-resolution atomic force microscope investigated several physical aspects of the dust particles which are deposited on a silicon plate. Cosima. Cosima analyzed the composition of dust particles by secondary ion mass spectrometry, using indium ions. Cosima was built by the Max Planck Institute for Extraterrestrial Physics with international contributions. The Cosima team is led by the Max Planck Institute for Solar System Research. JADA. JADA analyzed the dust environment of the comet coma by measuring the optical cross-section, momentum, speed and mass of each grain entering inside the instrument. Previous observations have shown that comets contain complex organic compounds. These are the elements that make up nucleic acids and amino acids, essential ingredients for life as we know it. Comets are thought to have delivered a vast quantity of water to Earth, and they may have also seeded Earth with organic molecules. The instrument was produced in Italy, and improved versions were used for Dawn and Venus Express. The 30 cm radio antenna along with the rest of the 18.5 kg instrument was built by NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory with international contributions by the Max Planck Institute for Solar System Research, among others. Concert. The concert experiment provided information about the deep interior of the comet using radar. The radar performed tomography of the nucleus by measuring electromagnetic wave propagation between the Philae lander and the Rosetta orbiter through the comet nucleus. This allowed it to determine the comet's internal structure and deduce information on its composition. Development was led by the Laboratoire de Planétologie de Grenoble with contributions by the Ruhr Universitat Bach and the Max Planck Institute for Solar System Research. RSI. 
RSI made use of the probe's communication system for physical investigation of the nucleus and the inner coma of the comet. Gas and particles Rosina. The instrument consisted of a double-focus magnetic mass spectrometer and a reflectron-type time-of-flight mass spectrometer. The RTOF was highly sensitive for neutral molecules and for ions. The Max Planck Institute for Solar System Research has contributed to the development and construction of the instrument. Midas. The high-resolution atomic force microscope investigated several physical aspects of the dust particles which are deposited on a silicon plate. Cosima. Cosima analyzed the composition of dust particles by secondary ion mass spectrometry, using indium ions. Cosima was built by the Max Planck Institute for Extraterrestrial Physics with international contributions. The Cosima team is led by the Max Planck Institute for Solar System Research. JADA. JADA analyzed the dust environment of the comet Coma by measuring the optical cross-section, momentum, speed and mass of each grain entering inside the instrument. Previous observations have shown that comets contain complex organic compounds. These are the elements that make up nucleic acids and amino acids, essential ingredients for life as we know it. Comets are thought to have delivered a vast quantity of water to Earth, and they may have also seeded Earth with organic molecules.